Here, in what had once been the southern Mediterranean Sea, is a 100 square mile stretch of layered sandstone with a surprising name. Valley of the Wales. The name is well suited. Scattered everywhere across this arid landscape are what look like heaps of rose-colored stones. Here's a Basilosaurus. But they're not stones. You can see how big the vertebrae are. Here's the lumbar partly weathered away. They're whale skeletons, 40 million years old. There's another one back here coming out of the mushroom. There's one over here. And back over there's one. This whole place is full of whales. Why were there so many whales concentrated in this one spot? Kingreeds believes that Whale Valley was once a protected bay, a lagoon hidden from the open sea by underwater sandbars. Perhaps the whales birthed their young here and came here to die. But even with hundreds of whale bones at his feet, Gingrich was disappointed. Nearly all of the skeletons belong to a whale called Basilosaurus, a 40 million year old creature already known to science. Basilosaurus lived full time in the water. If whales had evolved from land mammals, they had done so long before Basilosaurus. So Gingrich didn't think the bones would be of much interest. But he couldn't have been more wrong. After only a few days of digging, he made his second amazing find. It turned out that Basilosaurus had something modern whales have long since lost. For the first time, we've got whales that have legs. The bones were small, but unmistakable. A pelvis. A kneecap. Even toes. This whale had a complete set of leg bones. Gingrich brought back as much of the skeleton as he could carry. It was dramatic evidence that whales had once been four-legged animals. Since Gingrich's finds, he and others have filled in more of this fantastic story. Scientists now think that the earliest ancestor of whales was similar to this 50 million year old wolf-like mammal called Synonyx. Synonyx was a predatory scavenger that lived and hunted along the shores of an ancient sea. Perhaps its descendants found the water a source of abundant food and a haven from competition. Over millions of years, front legs became fins, rear legs disappeared, bodies lost fur and took on their familiar streamlined shape. Since Gingrich's first find, named Pachycetus, the list of known transitional whales has grown. It now includes Ambulocetus, Rhodocetus, Duridon, as well as Basilosaurus. They reveal another element of whale evolution, the gradual migration of nostrils to the top of the head as whales adapted to breathing in the water. How did whales lose their legs? As the years went by, they evolved into newer types of... Gingrich's work demonstrates what Darwin himself insisted. That the evidence for evolution is all around us, if we choose to look for it. And bones aren't the only evidence of whale evolution. 
Their ancestry is also visible in the way they move. Frank Fish studies how today's marine mammals swim. He looks for their evolutionary heritage in the way they move through the water. The big question is, how do you go from a terrestrial mammal that ran around on all four legs to something such as a dolphin, which now doesn't have any legs at all and is well adapted to swimming in the oceans? Even though whales look like fish, they don't swim like them. Fish swim by flexing their spines from side to side, like the shark. But mammals swim differently. This otter swims by undulating its spine up and down, in exactly the same way that whales do. And, as it turns out, in the same way that land mammals use their spines when running. Whales took with them into the water their ancestral way of moving, and we can still see it, 50 million years later. In one sense, evolution didn't invent anything new with whales. It was just tinkering with land mammals. It's using the old to make the new, and we call that tinkering. And it does this in every animal group at every time during evolutionary history. The starting point for whales was a four-legged land animal that lived over 50 million years ago. But land animals were also the product of a transformation, a much earlier one. Hundreds of millions of years ago, there were no animals on land. Before then, all our distant ancestors lived in the water. So at some point, you had the shift from life in water to life on land. That's a huge change. It was the moment when fish crawled out of the water and onto land. If these early animals hadn't made the transition, we wouldn't be here today. And it's important to understand how and when and possibly where that transition took place. The first creatures to leave the water really started something. Their descendants eventually evolved into today's reptiles, birds, and mammals. And these creatures' common origins are still visible in their bodies. Just like us, they all have bodies with four limbs. They're all tetrapods. What that means is that all these different creatures are descended from a common ancestor which had something very similar or akin to, to limbs. Just what was that common ancestor? And how did it leave the water 370 million years ago? Yeah, this spot's a little bit Those are the questions that paleontologists Neil Shubin and Ted Deschler are trying to answer. They think that the cliffs here in central Pennsylvania may offer some clues. All right, I think it's a good day for fossils. What do you say? Great day. Let's find some. All right. Hey, Doug. Hey, hey Doug. How you doing? Good. Good trip up. What'd you say we go over here? That's good. Get some good digging in today. An unlikely spot to hunt for early tetrapod fossils. But they're here because the rocks in these hills are just the right age. Laid down during the period in Earth's history called the Devonian. Yeah, it's really good. Back in the Devonian, this place was very different. It was south of the equator. Remember, the continents are continually moving around. And back at this time, we're actually dealing with a much more tropical climate in Pennsylvania. Hundreds of millions of years ago, the fossils and sediments in these layers were collecting on the bottom of a stream. 